Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining me. We are going to be talking about eczema and probiotic foods today. And uh, we have a lot of people that write in and talk to me about, you know, different flare-ups, especially in children. And we, we, I like to, to try to discover what's going on inside of people that is actually causing this skin condition to flare up. So eczema is a skin condition that causes itchy, red patches on different locations of the body, and it affects over 30 million people, and especially children between the ages of one and five. The standard treatment is steroidal creams or antihistamines, but that does not address the underlying cause of why it started in the first place. Scientists are finding that infants with a low intestinal microbial diversity during the first months of their life are associated with having this atopical eczema. And at least 60% of the cases of eczema are found in children under five years of age. But it's really been interesting because more and more adults are starting to have flare-ups with this, when usually this was just something in young children. So more evidence is pointing to the use of antibiotics and diets that are harming the gut floor and making the skin flare up. Eczema can also be called dermatitis. And this is caused by an overabundance of antibodies in the system that are called immunoglobulins. Okay, I don't know if I said that right. Immunoglobulins, or IgE. The production of IgE is the body's overreaction and attempt to protect itself. And this is kind of what most skin conditions are. Um, when the body has some kind of flare-up, it's usually the body's uh, is either kind of overreacting. It's kind of like having an allergy, like getting histamines or something like that. That's happening, but it's happening in the skin. And this is why eczema is considered an autoimmune condition, which means that the body is basically harming itself. So why are, what are the causes of this? Some of the underlying causes can be so multifaceted that you, you almost have to be a little bit of a detective to try to figure out what's going on in your skin. It's causing it to erupt and causing all these distressive symptoms. But this is kind of the way it is with just about everything, that the body produces a symptom and then you're like, okay, why is the body producing this symptom? What is happening that's making, um, you know, my body produce something like, I did this like in the very early days when I first found cultured foods, I did this with like high blood pressure. Well, everybody, you know, was like, oh, you just have high blood pressure. And I'm like, well, why is, why does my body have high blood pressure? Why all of a sudden am, am I producing this symptom that I didn't have before? What's going on that's causing this? I don't want to just mask it. I want to figure it out. And I did figure it out. And um, that's kind of what is happening with any kind of disease. So remember, <clears throat> disease is not the enemy. It's really the warning sign. It's the body's cry for help. And if it were me, the first place I would look would be in my gut. And many people, I mean, almost all the people that I've been in contact with that have written me emails and asked for help, um, have also have not only do they have eczema, but they also have an allergic reaction to food. And we see often that people with food allergies um, are missing really important gut bacteria. And they have often, these gut bacteria have been killed by antibiotics. That's usually what happens. And it, this goes hand in hand with eczema. The skin, you got to remember this. This is important. The skin is one of the body's biggest detoxifiers. And along with the gut, it makes up, and the liver, that makes up the biggest way that our body detoxifies us. So when you eat something and your body can't digest it properly, your skin may flare up with an allergic reaction. And I've seen that in myself too. There are certain things that I eat that will cause me to get like a rash or something. And um, I started to notice that it was a body, my body's way of reacting and I minimized those things. And then this was before cultured foods. And once I started adding cultured foods, those symptoms stopped. And I don't know if I was missing a bacteria that didn't allow me to digest it. Um, but, you know, just removing the offending food helps. 
But healing the gut with cultured foods at every meal goes a long way in restoring missing bacteria that are also causing the food allergies, but also in allowing the skin to heal and restore itself. And I have a, I have a bunch of blogs on that um, on my website, articles I've written about healing from food allergies. I mean, there's a lot of scientific research now that that shows that so many times when you restore that bacteria back to your gut that the food allergies go away. And I have had so many, 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 many letters and so many people in my life that were close up that healed from food allergies by adding cultured foods into their diet. Sometimes it took three months, sometimes it took a year, but eventually almost all of them across the board could start eating the foods that once they thought they couldn't, once they restored their gut flora. It's a pretty amazing thing. And um, they're seeing it more and more. And there's like, I think I've got three or four articles on it uh, from different parts of the country that are finding the same things. And we have so many people tell us that the eczema is cleared up by adding cultured foods to their diet, um, that it's just becoming more and more clear that, that the gut is so connected to this, that the very first place you should look is, to, is in your gut. Um, kefir is the cultured food with the most probiotics. And many, many people have told us that kefir made all the difference in healing their eczema. Um, I get a lot of, especially in children, I get a lot of emails from people saying that just that one food has made all the difference. And over the last few years, scientists have established a link between the gut microbiome and the skin. And they now know that if you alter the gut flora in a negative way, it can cause severe allergic reactions on the skin. Taking a lot of antibiotics wipes out that good bacteria as well as the harmful bacteria. And then what happens is it leads to greater intestinal permeability or leaky gut syndrome. And this allows certain intestinal bacteria to migrate to the spleen and the lymph nodes and increase the, sen- the severity of allergic skin reactions. So kefir and cultured vegetables, which um, are loaded with um, different probiotics, and lactose bacillus planetarum um, was in a study. And in this study, it reduced sc- SCORAD, which is a clinical tool for assessing the severity of dermatitis. And in children, the children that had dermatitis, it, it reduced the score quite a lot. And supplementation with this certain probiotic, which is one of my favorite probiotics, in, and it's in cultured vegetables. It's also in kefir, um, but it's more abundant in cultured vegetables. And it offered a potential treatment for children with this disease. And then there was a lot of longer-term studies that were being done to confirm it's how effective it was. And um, I can't say enough about this particular uh, bacteria. I love this one. And I, I go into great detail on a lot of different blog articles and, and uh, things on my website about how fantastic it is. Um, and they did another double-blinded study, study that was conducted on 220 children And these children were between 1 and 18 years of age. Each one of them had either moderate to severe dermatitis. And they gave these children probiotics. And um, all of these, the the probiotics that they gave them were in kefir. And uh, some of them were in uh, the cultured vegetables. But they get it to them all in three months. But they gave them to them in a probiotic form. And the children who received these probiotics showed lower uh, SCORAD scores, if I'm saying that right, it's S-C-O-R-A-D. Um, they received lower scores than the placebo group. And this difference remained um, even after four months of discontinuing the probiotics. It seemed to really heal them. And I have all the links and the references for this. In the, if you want to check out the article, I have that in the description below. And you can check out the article and see these uh, uh, references if you want to check it out yourself. And then there was another study that was done on 90 children, and these children were only one to three years of age, but they had, again, had moderate to severe um, dermatitis. And they were treated with a mixture of lactobacillus acidophilus, which is in kefir, and uh, bifidobacterium lactis, B. lactis, with uh, fruto oleosaccharae, which is a prebiotic. They call that FOS. And... Um, that is something that feeds the good bacteria in the gut. And they gave them all of that, which is really important because you want to feed that good bacteria along with just taking probiotics. That's one something I really think is every bit as important as probiotics is taking 
prebiotics, which is food for the bacteria, makes it grow. And they gave him a dosage of 5 billion colony forming units twice daily for eight weeks versus not getting anything with a placebo. And what they found was a decrease in, again, the SCORAD test and the test of 37% in the probiotic group. So it got better. And FOS, the prebiotic they gave him, fruto oleosaccharide, um, which makes your go good bacteria grow, was very dominant in this group. And uh, 33.7% um, reduction in that test is pretty significant. So changing your gut flora goes a long way in helping with any kind of skin condition. And I've seen this again and again and again and again uh, for the last 18 years. All of these studies showed that any or all of these different strains of good bacteria worked in helping to heal the skin. It wasn't just one specific bacterium. It was a, it was different ones. So that's what's so cool about it is because one of the best ways to do that is to take kefir because kefir has so many diverse strains in it and you kind of get them all in, in kefir. And kefir is a fermented drink and it can be made with all different kinds of milk or non-dairy milks. Um, and it, it's so wonderful. I've seen so many people heal on this that it it still kind of blows my mind how much it can do for people, um, how exciting it is for people to just, it's just food. And it's just something that's delicious. It's fun. It's the easiest cultured food to make and it has the most probiotics, 50 plus in, in kefir. Um, you know, so why not just consume a cup of kefir, you know, or try some cultured vegetables. You only need like one spoonful a day. Um, for cultured vegetables. And if you do this, you get all the probiotics used in these studies and you get two delicious foods. And the body has a protective halo around probiotic foods versus taking probiotic supplements that allows you to utilize these foods more powerfully. Supplements can, uh, can often be killed in the stomach acids and now they're putting coatings on probiotics to help them survive stomach acids, which is much more effective. So when you're trying to heal a skin condition, you know, always start with your gut first. Um, I think probiotic foods are more effective than probiotics. And so I'd love them to do a study on that because I think that the body, and I have found this in myself, and so many people have found that these foods actually work better than supplementation and they're cheaper and inexpensive and they, you know, reproduce themselves. So, you know, you can make a kefir over and over and over again, and you're just using whatever medium of milk you're putting in, whether it's non-dairy or dairy, that's all you're having to buy because the kefir just keeps reproducing and cultured vegetables do that. And it's, it's a powerful way to try to help your body heal your gut first and then allow your body as it heals to often heal your skin. So eating a lot of prebiotic foods too um, allows your good bacteria to grow and flourish. And I'm going to be talking a lot more about that because that is becoming a big deal. I am seeing over and over again when people add a lot of prebiotic foods, which are in fruits and vegetables, certain fruits and vegetables have, have these prebiotic things. They're fiber that the bacteria can digest. Your body doesn't digest it very well or get calories from it, but your bacteria does. And so it grows and it multiplies. That's why fiber is so good for you. And there's two different kinds of fiber. Some are soluble, insoluble. Soluble is the prebiotic kind. So you want that. Um, the other part, the other stuff is good for you too. The insoluble is also good for you too. Um, but you want that soluble fiber. I think that's why juicing is so effective for so many people because um, even though it's just a liquid, the soluble fiber stays in that liquid and that's prebiotic. So it really helps you so much. And, um, you know, I, I have seen again and again, I'm taking um, a lot of extra prebiotics, even in supplemental form. We have a product called Prebio Plus. I love it. I put in my coffee, I put in my tea because it's it doesn't... Uh, get killed by um, heat because it's a prebiotic, but it allows your good bacteria to flourish. And I have seen such a difference in my life when I did that. I've got a lot more studies on how it helps with diabetes, with weight loss, with inflammation. And I'm seeing that in my own life. It's a powerful supplement and it's just this little powder and I just put it in stuff and it's easy and it makes your good bacteria grow like crazy. Um, start slowly when you first start because it can kind of cause a ruckus if you do take it. But it's also, they're putting it more and more in healthy food items. I've noticed they're using it for the fiber content. I've seen it in food bars. I've seen it in um, supplemental drinks. I've seen it 
I've seen it a lot. They're, they're putting it more and more because it's so good for the body. And it also increases the fiber content of uh, a product and um, it's so good for you. So, and it also gives a tiny bit of flavor. It's a little bit sweet, but not really. You can't really taste it too much, but it does give flavor to things. And if you eat a lot of prebiotic foods along with probiotic foods, this is going to allow your good bacteria to grow and flourish. It's going to crowd out the harmful ones. It's They're going to exit the body. They're going to leave. And um, your good bacteria is going to be dominant. And that's going to change your entire ecostructure inside of your body, which allows your body to do what it's supposed to do, increases your immune system. It allows your skin to heal and repair. And if you eliminate the process and sugary foods and you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, include some good fats along with some omega-3 fatty acids in them. Um, and there are a lot of different protocols out there now. I mean, there's so many. I mean, we're all so different, but there's so many different ailments, um, different ways of treating them. But essentially, everybody's diet should have some probiotics and prebiotics, vitamins and minerals that the body needs so it can heal. That's in any diet. But the more you have of those, the more your body is going to heal and get well. I have a story on my Lives Touch page. I have a Lives Touch page on my website. People write in, send me these wonderful um, articles and uh, not articles, stories of their lives, of their healing. And they have a picture with it. So if you want to check it out on my website at culturefoodlife.com and in the, in the menu bar, you'll see Lives Touch. These stories are so motivating. They're so sweet. I get so many of them. But I want to tell you Cassie's story, her journey of healing, her son of eczema. Um, you know, the body knows how to heal itself. It just needs your help. And you're the only one who controls what you put in your mouth. Um, so just try it and see what happens. It's it's just food. It just might change everything like it did for Cassie. So let me tell you Cassie Barnhart's story. This is her story in her words. Two years ago, my son and I developed eczema shortly after he was born. I knew that it was somehow connected to the um, five antibiotics I received while I was in labor with him. Since none of my other kids had antibiotics while I was in labor, um, all of them were, um, you know, didn't have eczema. And I had never had eczema before the uh, five antibiotics I had received. And the doctors told me there was no cure for it and that antibiotics couldn't have given it to me and my baby. But my baby was covered from head to toe in a horrible oozing eczema and I had to keep his hands covered to keep him from scratching himself to the point of bleeding. And I noticed that our eczema was worse when I ate anything with gluten or dairy in it, and I begged God for wisdom and started reading and researching as much as I could. I started us both on probiotics and started drinking organic apple cider vinegar every day. And when my son was old enough, I started giving him a little bit of apple cider vinegar too. And then I discovered sourdough and kefir, and I no longer have eczema. It's amazing. My son is almost eczema-free, and if he does have a flare-up, it's not bad at all. We're still working on getting his gut restored and he loves his kefir. He asks for it at every meal and drinks it with only a little fruit from the second ferment. We teach people how to second ferment, by the way. If you want to know how to do that, it's on my website. Um, and he knows he needs it. Doctors still don't believe me, but it doesn't matter. I know without a doubt that it healed us and that the antibiotics were at the root cause. Thank you, Cassie. Now, here's an update from Cassie. I just want to add, add an update to my story. I think my son was about two years old when I originally shared our story, and now he's five. He has been eczema-free for a few years now. He still loves his kefir and now drinks kombucha as well. Uh, thank you for all your help. And that was from Cassie. So that's an encouraging story. Um, I get those stories all, all the time. And we hear these stories of success. People do different things, too. Some people just do cultured vegetables. A lot of Most of the people do kefir. Um, but it's, it's an amazing thing that food can work like medicine in the body. So I just want to encourage you today, if you're struggling with this, to maybe check out your gut, um, you know, try some of these foods and try to add more fruits and vegetables, see what happens, restore that gut flora. Uh, you can try supplement, probiotic supplements. I think cultured foods work better, but do whatever you can do because I just want you to get better. Um, do what you can do and see, see how you feel. And see if it makes a difference for you because your body is your best teacher and nobody can convince you once you've been well. Like Cassie's story, nobody's ever going to convince her that that didn't work for her because she's lived it. 
Um, she's gone through it. She's understood it. And that's what happens. Once you understand uh, how to take care of your body and it teaches you what it needs, uh, you are off and sailing and nobody can convince you otherwise. And it's a powerful way to live. And I want to encourage that for you too, because you don't have to believe me. You know, once you learn it for yourself, uh, then you're free. And um, that is, that's an amazing way to live. And um, I want that for you because we are all have these magnificent bodies that do all these things and we just really don't understand it. And once you start to understand the things that you can do to make things better, man, it changes your whole life. And once you feel good, you do good because you, you feel better and you want to do stuff and you want to help others and you spread the good news. And when you're healthy, others around you see it. And just like Cassie sh sharing her story, she's going to help hundreds of people, if not thousands of people with her story. And you know, I'm thankful for the stuff I went through because it changed my life. And I hope it will change yours too. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, check out my website at cultureofyourlife.com. I'm going to put the description and the link below if you want to read the article, if you don't want to listen, or if you want to see some of the recipes on there or some of the things that we used or look at Cassie's story. Um, just check it out below. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful week. And we will see you next Tuesday.